the two of you open the double doors carefully. Behind them is another foyer, just like the one before. However, this one, thankfully, isn't flooded. You and Evelyn ready yourselves for anything as you step into the dry hallway. It's quiet, and your footsteps ring out in silence around you. You have the strangest feeling of deja vu. The two of you make your way down the dry hall. It's quiet, unsettlingly quiet as you do, and every hair stands up on the back of your neck. There's another small door here, like the other one, and it occurs to you you're not even sure the space behind it should be able to exist. Wouldn't it just butt up against the stairs? You open the small door, and a warm, fetid, and sour smell assaults your nostrils. Old and rusted, it's some kind of vent. There's a fan at the end, but you can't tell from here if it branches out or not. You play a quick game of rock, paper, scissors to see who goes in first. Paper beats rock. Looks like you're the one who's going in first. Or maybe you should just have asked Evelyn to do it. Oh well. You definitely feel like the cool action hero John McClane, and not at all like Winnie the Pooh about to get stuck in Rabbit's door. A moment after you're in here, Evelyn crawls in behind you. Is there a patron state of claustrophobia? You can't remember at the moment. If there is, it's probably because they were buried alive, or something equally horrible. You try not to think about that. It seems that at the very end by the fan, the shaft turns to the right. You can also try some way to get by the fan, you suppose. You turn and peer down the corridor to the vent shaft. The rusty tunnel seems to stretch on and on to darkness. Not that you can see that far. You and Evelyn start down the long vent corridor. Somewhere along the way, the cool, rusty steel beneath your fingers starts to soften, and the air begins to feel hot and humid, like fetid breath on your face. The coppery tang of blood is sharp in the back of your nose. You're not sure you want to keep going, but there's no real way you can turn around either. You press on for what seems honestly like too long. Many minutes are spent on your hands and knees in a squelching, moist hole. The smell of blood in your nose! Finally, you come to the end, pressing your way through a filmy, fleshy threshold that dumps you into a pool, wet, in some strange, unknown location. You wish ardently for a towel, but there's really no way for either of you to get this slime off. You'd probably just get dirty again anyway. Looking around the damp stone room, you see that besides the prolapsed whatever it is that you crawl through, there's a bricked up door in the left wall, a hole in the rough shape of a door knocked in the right wall, and a pile of junk, and a recessed hole of some kind in the furthest wall. The floor is covered in a thin pool of sticky goop, and the atmosphere is oppressive, as if someone were behind you breathing shallowly and regularly with the small hairs in the back of your neck. You pick through the trash, and it's exactly as disgusting as you imagine it would be. Smells and it's full of unidentifiable muck and twisted bits of garbage. You think you might have spotted a human hand, but you didn't look at it too hard. The most interesting thing you can find is what seems to be a backpack. It's heavy. Is there something inside? You open the backpack warily, just in case there's a monster or <laughs> a Cupid doll inside. Wait, hold on a second. Is that your jacket? You pull the coat out of the bag and, oh shit, oh fuck, a black tendril reaches out of the bag and grabs around your arm. You yank your arm, dropping the bag to the floor, and calling for Evelyn's help, you smash at the tendril around your wrist with the butt of your gun, while Evelyn bashes the bag with his pipe. Whatever it is, hisses and screams like a caterwauling baby. The two of you beat the shit out of the thing until it finally flops down the floor bloody and broken, like a worm. It tries to squirm its way away, and only is succeeding in pulling out its gross body a few inches from the back before it finally dies. Great, right. it was one of those dolls after all. You pat down the pockets of the jacket before you put it on fully. Holy shit, there's like almost all of your inventory in here. You waste no time putting your other objects in your pockets too. You light up a cigarette and pass it to Evelyn, before lighting one for yourself and putting it to your lips. And only then do you look at the photo. You're an unwelcome guest here. A drunken accident of circumstance intruding your way into a happy moment that isn't yours. It's always been this way.
The photo has always looked like this. The back is blank. It's always been blank. You hesitate to imagine what would be written there if there were a message. You slip the photo back into your jacket pocket without another glance. You have to focus now. You didn't come all this way just to lay down and die. There doesn't seem to be anything else useful in the pile of trash. Aside from that, there's a bricked up door, the broken open part of the wall, the strange circular recess in the wall opposite where you entered. The two of you approach the broken open hole in the wall. You shine the flashlight into the area beyond. There is a long, dark hallway splattered with blood, strange chest-high pillars breaking the open flow of the corridor. It looks like there might be a door at the end. The two of you move carefully down the hall, pausing for Evelyn to inspect the first pillar that you come to. As you stand there, Evelyn finds there is some sort of groove in the base of the pillar. The both of you freeze, hearing something in the distance. It sounds like a baby crying. No, babies. The two of you squat down to examine the groove, taking advantage of its bulk between you and the door. You hear Evelyn murmuring as he runs his finger in the groove, but your attention is pulled away from whatever he's saying as you see something slowly staggering into the far door frame. Its massive, bulging, squamous head barely fits through the door as it stoops, long limbs and grasping. The cry is coming from it. Wait, its head? What the hell is that? It's coming close. You can feel its steps on the stone below you. Its cacophonous cries echo off the bare walls. Evelyn goes first, beckoning you to follow him, hands and knees on the cold, moist stone. You pray that you won't make a sound. The sobbing creature doesn't seem to sense you at first, but as you near the door, it stops moving. It has eyes all over its head. Can it see you? As the lurching creature turns its obscene body towards you, the two of you scramble to your feet and start to run full speed down the corridor. You have a good lead on it. You're almost out the door when Evelyn skids to a halt and throws his arms up to stop you. There is no room beyond. Just a black pit. Is it a leap of faith or an admission of defeat? Either way, you grab Evelyn's hand and jump. Your stomach rushes to your throat as you fall and fall. You hold on to Evelyn's hand tightly, praying to God as you're swallowed by the darkness. <laughs>